Good morning, everybody. My name is Adam Smith, and it's my very great pleasure to be your guide to today's meeting. As you've heard from Gulnar, Helena, and Erica, this is a very important topic with very many aspects to talk about. So we have a great deal to get through today. So alongside being your guide, my other job is to try and make sure that everything runs on time. Wish me luck. The, the meeting is going to be divided into several different sections. The first section is on the value of science, and to start us thinking about that, I'm very pleased to welcome Serge Haroche, 2012 Nobel Laureate in Physics and Professor Emeritus at the Collège de France in Paris, to give a talk on the challenge facing science in our dangerous world. Please join me in welcoming Serge. Good morning. Since Adam gave me a very limited amount of time, and since I know he's very serious in keeping the time, uh, I, I have written my talk and I will try to uh, read it as I show you the slides. During this Nobel Dialogue, we will talk about the promising advances in science, the hopes they hold for providing answers to the problems facing humanity, and we will debate about the best ways of making scientific research even more effective. We cannot, can, can we see the slides, please? Okay. Okay. So, we cannot forget, however, that we live in difficult times with natural, societal, and geopolitical dangers which strongly impact on science. I would like to analyze these dangers and to discuss the way to overcome them. Let me start by showing you a famous photo taken a decade ago by the Cassini Space Mission. It shows our planet seen from Saturn, more than 1.5 billion kilometers away, a faint blue spot isolated in the universe. This photo illustrates what we can achieve with science and symbolizes at the same time the fragility of our human condition. Here on Earth, in the middle of a vast and nearly empty universe, we are living at a time when we depend more than ever on science to face many existential challenges. Obviously, science has the potentials to meet these challenges. It has enabled us to make gigantic technological progresses that were impossible to foresee barely half a century ago. When I was young, I could not imagine the laptops, the lasers, the GPS, or the magnetic resonance imaging. These innovations invented in just one generation have profoundly changed the way we live. They are due to science, which has been able to transform fundamental discoveries about the quantum world of atoms, electrons, and photons into devices <coughs> that have considerably increased our means of action and of acquiring knowledge about the world. These are inventions in physics, my field of research, but equivalent progress has been made in chemistry, in material sciences, in biology and medicine. Yet, the general public has little understanding of what science really is. The devices that surround us in our everyday lives have become so familiar that no one marvels at the powers they give us to get around, to calculate, to communicate, or simply to live better. We take it all for granted. The paradox is that these obvious successes of science are accompanied by a growing distrust of science in society. Science is under attack by the proliferation of untruths and fake news circulating on social networks, leading groups of individuals to come together in virtual communities that mutually reinforce their harmful ideas. When scientists, objectively observing the world through precise measurements, alert us to global warming and its potentially catastrophic consequences, they provoke denialist or conspiracy reactions. The COVID crisis <coughs> also showed how anti-vaccine reaction can develop irrationally, and you have seen that in Brazil. Often, these anti-science reactions come from fanatical religious groups denying the advances of science and advocating dangerous forms of obscurantism. The irony is that these attacks are propagated by the Internet 
the extraordinary means of communication that science has made available to society. The laser beams which circulate in a, which circulate in a network of optical fibers crisscrossing the planet carry the best of things, usual information flowing everywhere at the speed of light, but also the worst of things, fake news, lies, and conspiracy theories. The development of artificial intelligence, which increases the means of propagating fa false news and manipulating minds, will further increase the destructive power of these attacks on science. The only effective response to these attacks is through education, through teaching, which from the earliest age should make children understand the values of science and of the scientific method, based on the observation of facts and the construction of models to account for them. This education must nurture a critical mindset in young people, explaining to them what rational doubt is, which approaches the truth through a constant confrontation between observation, experience, and theory. It is sad that the teaching of the spirit of the Enlightenment is not self-evident, that it is under threat and is even declining in many countries. Part of the problem stems from the fact that the government of these countries do not make teaching their young people an absolute priority. This is particularly true in developing countries where teachers are not given the training, the recognition, and the salaries they would need to be able to elevate the level of education required for forming responsible citizens. 50 years ago, countries like South Korea or Singapore were poorer than most South American countries. Their progress towards the top of developed countries and to the top of the PISA ranking in education is directly related to the drastic improvement of their school system. It costs a lot of financial resources, but training and nurturing the minds of the young people is the best investment a country can make for its future. French philosophers of the Enlightenment have long ago stressed the necessity to defend reason against passions and emotions, and they have theorized about the value of public education in texts which remain relevant more than two centuries later. Condorcet, a mathematician and philosopher of the 18th century, wrote at the beginning of the French Revolution a treatise on education which emphasizes the role of giving to children access to knowledge, whether it is in science or in humanities, to shape rational minds who will be able to make free decisions in their lives without being praised to demagogues manipulating their emotions. As Condorcet wrote, any society not enlightened by philosophy, and by philosophy in, mean, meant natural philosophy, is deceived by charlatans. Religious passions were particularly pointed out by Condorcet, who considered that secular public education should be separated from the teaching of religion. His thoughts on this issue are very modern, in a time when religious fanaticism is on the rise. The importance of rational thinking and the understanding that it is a prerequisite for the progress of societies has been later emphasized by philosophers of the 19th century, such as Tocqueville and Auguste Comte, whose scientific positivism was a direct continuation of the Enlightenment. This philosophy is, so to speak, embedded in the Brazilian mindset since the Auguste Comte motto, order and progress, is inscribed on your national flag. And I must say it's much better than the religious sentences that you can find on the flags or banknotes of other countries. Taking, talking about science and education, I should stress another challenge. Too few women are engaged in scientific activities, especially in mathematics and physics. How can we create the conditions that will enable mankind to make better use of the creativity and imagination that resides in the brains of half of humanity, which for historical and sociological reasons has been largely kept away from science? This requires an equal education and an equal encouragement to get into science for boys and girls from the earliest age. The aspiration to diversity in quality education goes, of course, beyond gender equality. In Brazil, it should extend to all the children of African and native origin who should also benefit from a good public education system. I would now like to turn to another challenge 
posed to science in the troubled time humanity has entered, that caused by attacks on its global and universal nature. Science was undoubtedly humanity's first global activity long before the globalization of markets and the economy. Since the beginnings of modern science, scientists have exchanged their knowledge and ideas. The French Academy of Sciences welcomed Dutch scientists like Huygens and German scientists like Humboldt in the 17th and 18th century. Thomas Young in England and Augustin Fresnel in France corresponded about their discoveries in optics even though their countries had long been at war. The same can be said about Einstein in Germany, Langevin in France, and Eddington in England at the end of the First World War when they discussed relativity theory. The global nature of science must be preserved despite the current geopolitical tensions. We have witnessed recently a tendency to make more difficult the exchange of students and postdoc researchers between countries, especially between China and the West. This is a very dangerous trend. I would like to stress in this context the positive role played by international institutions whose mission is to bring together young scientists from all over the world, coming in particular from South southern countries. One of these institutions, which I know well for having taught there many times, is the International Center for Theoretical Physics of Trieste, founded in 1964 by the Nobel Prize physicist Abdul Salam. It has hosted in workshops, summer schools, and PhD programs many young scientists from Brazil and other South American countries. It celebrates this year its 60th anniversary, and it must be given the support which will allow it to keep playing an important role in the decades to come. I should add that science is universal because it corresponds it responds to an innate aspiration of humanity in all parts of the world to knowledge and to constantly find new ways of understanding and interpreting nature. In this sense, it is similar to other forms of creativity in art, literature, and philosophy. It has to be said that the great periods of scientific evolution from the Renaissance in Italy to the advent of quantum physics in Germany were periods of great creativity and innovation in the arts, painting, and philosophy. And it is undeniable that the great scientists of those areas, Galileo, Einstein, Niels Bohr, for instance, were influenced by all the ferment of thought that took place in their time. This universalism of science must be preserved. Science cannot thrive in universities without the academic freedom, which allows critical thought and creativity to express themselves. The Nobel Prize illustrates the deep link between all forms of creativity, since it associates in a set of prestigious awards those who have contributed to major advances in science, but also in literature and in activity advancing peace and the defense of human values. Another challenge that science is facing is the risk of pitting basic research against applied research. Fundamental research is the soil on which applications grow, often at the, after a long period of maturation. The history of science provides us with numerous examples of this dependence of innovation on basic research. To mention just one recent case, the new vaccines against COVID were developed in less than a year because basic research into messenger RNA has been carried out over the previous 30 years by the two scientists who have just been awarded the Nobel Prize for Medicine. The essential nature of basic research, motivated by pure curiosity and its importance as a fertile ground for inventions, was emphasized by Hendrik Casimir, one of the theoreticians who participated a century ago to the founding of quantum physics and who later became the CEO of the Philips Electronic Company. In his biography, he wrote, I think there is hardly any example of 20th century innovation which is in not indebted to basic scientific thought, and this is also true, for, of course, for the 21st century. Expressing the same idea, Abraham Flexner, the founder of the prestigious Princeton Institute for Advanced Study, wrote a book with a provocative title, The Usefulness of Useless Knowledge, published just before the Second World War. The fact that apparently useless science undertaken by mere curiosity has been the ferment of all the useful inventions of the modern times must be understood 
by the political decision makers. Unfortunately, the urgency of the problems facing the planet today is leading politicians to ignore this essential truth and to excessively favor short-term application-oriented projects at the expense of long-term undirected fundamental research. This misconception is particularly true in countries from the South where we often hear policymakers saying that basic science is a luxury that they cannot afford and that their country should focus on short-term applied projects. This is very short-sighted. Technology is so intertwined with basic knowledge that it needs researchers who are familiar with fundamental science. How could you develop, for instance, novel quantum technologies with engineers not familiar with the laws of quantum physics? More deeply, the curiosity of young minds is attracted by big questions posed by basic science. Having active projects in these areas is essential to direct towards science young students who may later orient their research towards more applied projects. I have tried to share with you my thoughts on the situation of science in the dangerous period that humanity has entered. Climate change is accelerating, with its share of natural disasters threatening living conditions in many parts of the world, with the risk of triggering massive population migrations. The COVID epidemic has shown us just how vulnerable our societies are to new viruses and environmental degradation. All these upheavals are accompanied by wars and geopolitical tensions that are likely to increase with the existential danger posed to humanity by the spread of nuclear weapons. These conditions are favorable to the rise of irrationality and conspiracy theories that are profoundly contrary to the values of science. The hope that we must retain lies in the fact that so many men and women around the world, driven by the desire to preserve the values of humanity, continue to work with determination to increase our knowledge. There is still so much to discover about the universe and about life, and to pursue this quest with passion is a constant aspiration of humanity, as shown in past centuries by scientists who, under dire conditions, have continued to work and to discover. Today's situation in Europe and in the Middle East is frighteningly reminiscent of what the world experienced less than a century ago. It might look far away to you in South America, but you are obviously also impacted here by the events taking place there. In 1939, Abraham Flexner started his book, The Usefulness of Useless Knowledge, with the following sentence, which has a profound resonance with current events. Is it not a curious fact that in a world steeped in irrational hatreds which threatens civilization itself, men and women, old and young, detach themselves wholly or partly from the angry current of daily life to devote themselves to the cultivation of beauty, to the extension of knowledge, to the cure of disease, to the amelioration of suffering, just as though fanatics were not simultaneously engaged in spreading pain, ugliness, and suffering. These words, written in 1939, summarize the values carried by science and its role as a beacon in a world full of dangers. Let us hope that mankind will avoid a tragic repetition and will find its way back to wisdom. Our dialogue today will show that, provided that peace prevail, science has much to contribute in the coming years to solving the many pressing problems facing our blue planet. Obrigado.